Well, of all things, can it be? Really? No. Yes! <laughs> oh, hi! Oh, my eye! I've had a few drops, but I can still see that's old Deuteronomy. <laughs> old Deuteronomy's lived a long time. He's a cat who's had many lives in succession. He was famous in proverb and famous in rhyme a long while before Queen Victoria's accession. Old Deuteronomy's buried nine wives and more, I'm tempted to say 99. And his numerous progeny prospers and thrives and the village is proud of him in his decline. At the sight of that placid and bland physiognomy as he sits in the sun on the vicarage wall, the oldest inhabitant croaks, well, of all things, can it be, really? No. Yes. Oh, oh, I, oh my, I. My mind may be wandering, but I confess I believe it is old Deuteronomy. <laughs> Old Deuteronomy sits in the street. He sits on the high street in market day. The bullocks may bellow and the sheep they may bleat, but the dogs and the herdsmen will turn them away. And the cars and the lorries roam over the curb and the villagers put up a sign, road closed, so that nothing untoward may chance to disturb old Deuteronomy's rest when he feels so disposed, or when he's involved in domestic economy. And the oldest inhabitant croaks, well, of all things, can it be? Really? No. Yes, ha ha ha, hi, oh my, hi. <laughs> my sight's unreliable and yet I can guess that the cause of the trouble is old Deuteronomy. The old Deuteronomy lies on the floor of the crock and the dingo for his afternoon sleep. And when the men say there's just time for one more, then the landlady from her back parlour will peep and say, now our checks all go by the back door. Old Deuteronomy mustn't be woken. I'll have the police if there's any uproar. So out they all go without a word spoken. The digestive repose of that feline's gastronomy must never be broken whatever the falls. And the oldest inhabitant croaks. Well, of all things, can it be? Really? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. And my legs may be tottery. I must go slow and be careful of old Deuteronomy.